Welcome to season three of How About We Do This Together, a podcast of the Northwest Christian Network. Season three is based around the 2023 Northwest Christian Convention, happening in Turner from July 27th to July 2nd. Follow the link in the show notes to register before the convention and to watch the videos after the convention is over. I hope you enjoy today's episode as we talk about how we can do this thing called the church together. Hey everybody, welcome to this episode of How About We Do This Together, a podcast of the Northwest Christian Network. This is the third episode of season three as we are going through the teachers, uh, we're talking to the teachers of each of our equipped classes that we're offering for this year's convention and uh, introducing this idea of equipped classes and which each one covers. And today we are talking with Lars Coburn from Bushnell University, who is going to be teaching our class on volunteer leadership. And each of our classes has something unique about it. And the cool thing about this class is it's actually uh, adapted from a class that is offered at Bushnell. And so it's really a very close equivalent to an academic course. The other two classes that we're offering are a bit more tailored tailored for this kind of event, kind of created for it. But um, Lars is actually bringing us content from the leadership program at Bushnell. We're really excited about that. So um, we're going to talk to him about the class and about the leadership program at Bushnell. So Lars, thank you for joining us. Yeah, so glad to be with you, Matt, and uh, to be with my friends in ministry all over the Northwest. I'm from the Northwest originally. So I serve um, now at my alma mater, um, graduated from Northwest Christian University at the time in 2014, and went to spend my exile in ministry uh, (laughs) as a youth pastor in Southern California in the Churches of Christ. So I'm from the non-instrumental Churches of Christ tradition of our movement, and Served there in San Diego for two years, learned a lot, um, managed some volunteers. In fact, that's actually where I got started with this idea of volunteer leadership uh, with our children's and youth ministry and putting in place a ministry training uh, curriculum, which is the outcome of the course at the convention, is you'll get to walk away with kind of a scope and sequence for uh, leading your volunteers. But, uh, but more in that as we talk a little bit further. But yeah, my story then takes me to Fuller Seminary where I got, uh, while in ministry, I did my seminary training at Fuller Theological Seminary in Pasadena. A lot of good Fuller connections. In fact, Donald McGavern uh, started his school of mission and, and missiology here at uh, NCC at the time in the, the 50s or so, I think it was, after his time being a missionary. And it's where he started writing about and talking about the homogeneous unit principle. And it got the attention of places like Fuller Seminary. And so he actually started their school of intercultural studies and school of mission down there. So uh, throughout the years, we've had some really good uh you know, budding partnerships and, and Fuller uh, was, a, was a, a really amazing place to study. And while I got my master's there, I was serving as family minister at the Glendale Church of Christ, where we actually transitioned uh, our worship styles from a cappella only to uh, kind of a both and with instrumentation. Uh, we, we were engaging the, the, some of the topics around women in leadership and and different things like that, and it was a quite a time as we journeyed uh, together. Uh, and then the pandemic hit, and my wife and I decided to discern like where do we want to raise our kids, and where do we mm. want to live uh, with our family for the long haul. And so we discerned that uh, we should be near family and commit to kind of having a life that uh, is embedded in the neighborhood and in the community that we wanted to care about, and that God would call us into ministry. Uh, wherever we were living. Uh, Mm -hmm. So that led us to discern uh, maybe Los Angeles. We weren't natives of Los Angeles. Maybe that's not our place to live. Um, Mm -hmm. And uh, and my wife ended up moving to take a teaching job here uh, in Eugene. And I began discerning what God was calling me into next. And one of those things, uh, after we got on the ground and, and purchased a home and we're doing some some life together with with different people. I I connected with Troy Dean, my campus pastor and 
friend of the podcast and all of that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And with my boss, my now boss, Keith Potter, Vice President of University Advancement at Bushnell. And we were just sharing uh, our, all of our hearts for the church. And I wanted to reconnect with Stone Campbell Restoration Movement folks in the area and build a bridge between Churches of Christ and Christian Church and Disciples of Christ pastors. And um, they sensed that it would be a good good role for me to be doing that on behalf of the university. And so after about a year of doing some administrative behind the scenes work for the University Advancement Office, I have stepped into the Director of University Relations role. And the primary role that I have is, is church relations. I also do some public relations PR stuff. But, um, but yeah, one of, the, one of the great journeys this last year is getting to know people like you, Matt, and, and other ministers around our area, um, and just figuring out ways to resource uh, churches. And so one of the things that early on uh, we discovered is that we have this great program, this Master of Arts in Leadership program, it's housed under our business school, which is kind of interesting. Um, hmm. But partly that's because it has four concentrations, a business um, administration concentration, a higher education concentration, and a nonprofit. And then it also has a church leadership concentration within it. So hmm. the core courses all focus on leader formation, and, uh, and then each of the concentrations allows you to take two courses or two to three courses in your specific concentration and it's a two-year program that you can do in one year if you decide to take uh, two classes at a time. Um, mm -hmm. But that's, that's a little bit about the program I teach uh, as an adjunct in the, uh, the church leadership concentration and then also in the core. So I teach a financial stewardship course and then also uh, a biblical theology of leadership course in the church concentration and then a few of us are adept at teaching some of the other courses and there's the the nonprofit uh, concentration has the volunteer leadership course embedded in it and so um, that's kind of what I'll be bringing I'll be bringing a little bit of a blend of the three courses that I'm kind of adept at teaching and um, a little bit of some of the key formation questions that the program asks um, as a whole. Okay. Awesome. So uh, you started to, yeah, you, you started to introduce us to the leadership program and um, the different streams that it has. As we're looking at the convention and um, our, the, the people that we're, we're reaching in the convention, I wanted to start before we talk about the specific class on what it would be the what is the value of the leadership program for church leaders? What are they going to, to get from participating in a master's program on leadership? Yeah, so, you know, I think one of the things that uh, pastors maybe are more attuned at than the average leader um, is that you, the best thing you have to offer your congregation is not all the head knowledge you know, uh, but actually who you are. So several of my um, uh, mentors in ministry said, you know, the best thing that the church gets when they hire you as youth pastor or hire you as family minister or uh, to have you come is not the goods and services you provide by like writing articles or preaching sermons or leading classes, but it's actually your marriage. It's uh, you as being part of the congregation, a member of it. And I think that's something that a lot of organizations are now kind of uh, realizing, that leadership really is about who you are. Um, the best leadership tool that you have to offer your organization is who you are. And so pastors get to be part of um, the Master of Arts in Leadership as they discern kind of what, who, what is my theory of leadership? Uh, what do I, what's my leadership identity? Um, the, the Master of Arts in Leadership at Bushnell it takes leadership kind of as face value and says there is no one leadership theory out there that's right we want to introduce you to them we want you to develop your leadership theory we want you to to uh, wrestle with your definition of leadership and so throughout the program in the core courses you come back to those three questions what's your definition of leadership what's your theory of leadership and what's your leadership identity and um 
And so as, as you go through that, ministers get to kind of rub shoulders with people in business and people in nonprofits and higher education and in these other spheres. And, and you get to kind of ask some questions like, how is my organization different? Um, how is my uh, leadership style uh, gonna gonna glean from other things? The reality is you're you're absorbing what you read and what you see uh, exemplified in other organizations, and what you pay attention to is going to be the thing that you prioritize. And so the class offers you time to reflect on that and to to evaluate: is this actually what I want to um, do? There's a class on our mission statement at the university. So one of the core courses is on wisdom, faith, and service. Uh, Bushnell fosters wisdom centered on faith in Jesus Christ, leading to lives of meaningful service through these excellent academic programs within a Christ-centered community. And so you're studying some business leadership things, some vision casting, some leadership and management things, financial stewardship and, and how to read financial documents. You're, you're kind of getting the nuts and bolts of leadership in an organization within a Christian worldview and, uh, and applying the Bible and theology as we go. So it's not per se a seminary program, but you're allowing biblical texts and uh, Christian um, ideas and worldview to form, faith in Christ to form how we evaluate these Harvard Business Review articles we might be reading or uh, books by, uh, you know, uh, Brene Brown and other leadership uh, experts. So I, I think it's a really helpful program in general. Um, and, I, and I think it's something that I would love to see a group of, of pastors commit to saying, hey, we would love to go through this as a cohort together. Right, right yeah. now, um, we have a lot of people taking it from the nonprofit and higher education concentrations. Um, mm -hmm. And then we have a few that are saying, hey, this seems to be a little different than an MBA. I'd really like to have the business experience to know how to lead my organization, but I don't want to just do an MBA. I'd like to have a little more flexibility. So we have some people in it that are doing the business or one of the other concentrations, and even a few pastors locally who uh, who did the MBA who said this was really helpful. Um, and so we've adapted a few of the courses that are similar to what you learn in an MBA, but still more focused on the leadership question than uh, than maybe just the straight business. Okay. You know, it's interesting as you're talking about that, it, it kind of fits with some of the stuff we've been trying to include in this year's convention, realizing that there's, you know, you usually fall in love with ministry because you loved volunteering in youth group or you loved leading a small group, or, you know, those, those like clear ministry moments. And then you actually get into ministry and realize, oh, I also need to know how to run a nonprofit, how to handle finances, how to do all these other things that are beneath the surface. So like a lot of the workshops that we're offering are things like how do you, you know, handle nonprofit finances without accidentally um, laundering money? How do you, um, you know, like th those nuts and bolts and um, stuff that we just don't think about. Uh, and it sounds like the, mass, the, the leadership program would be an, an intensive way of preparing you for the whole breadth of what actual leadership looks like on the ground. Yeah, that's the, that's the goal, right, is um, as you fall in love with Jesus, you want to invite others to follow Jesus. Um, mm -hmm. In the Biblical Theology of Leadership course, we talk about how God is leader and mm -hmm. uh, rediscovering the agency of God and that our initiatives should join with God's initiatives. Well, you can't do that if you don't have practices, if you're not formed to discern what God is up to. Uh, and as a congregation, you can't lead a congregation, you can't uh, serve a congregation in such a way that they would be formed to know what God is up to uh, because they're going to be formed by all these other things that are distracting them or leaders who are uh, taking them in their own personal direction. And what we often discover is that as you go on a leadership journey of your own, you discover, well, how much am I just wanting this platform for myself? Mm -hmm. And um, and I think that's a struggle for pastors to balance yeah. being a uh, a f strong leader who who uh, inspires people to follow God in these specific ways, 
um, and balancing that strong leadership focus and identity with um, a willingness to admit that that actually it's God we want to follow, not my personality or my um, my pet projects. Um, mm. And so as you go through this uh, this program, I think we're we're giving leaders a chance to work this stuff out, to flesh it out, to ask these questions, and then get develop some skills. So developing communication skills. Uh, throughout the core courses, uh, students are required to um, present via video, um, either to a live audience or at least to the professor in, um, in a project format where they are leading in their organization in some way, whether it's you know, leading an imaginary staff meeting or speaking to some donors about a, 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 you know, a project or a program that they want to get funded or visiting with uh, their board, their elder board. Um, these are things that you actually want to uh, give and create tools of not only talking about your leadership theory but also developing communication skills and, um, and growing in your leadership. So the students are, are constantly asked, you know, what um, what core skills and competencies do I need to develop? Where am I strong? Where am I weak? Um, and those are the things that we try and help them form. Uh, and then at the end of each course, you've got a project. You've got this final paper slash project that can be very practical to the ministry that you're doing. And I think that's one of the things that I love about the program. Some things that I wish my Master of Arts in Theology uh, had focused a little bit more on was that at the end of each course, this actually meant that I was better off in my organization and that I was I was actually going to be able to use this paper and this work that I did um, in a real tangible way. That sounds awesome. You got me very intrigued. Um, yeah. So this so that's the overall program, and at the convention, we're going to have one particular class or an adapt an adaptation of one of those classes um, that people will be able to take part in and it's specifically volunteer leadership. So could you tell us about that course, uh, the version that you're going to be doing at conventions, uh, what it's about and also who you would especially find it helpful or in what kind of circumstances? Yeah. So the courses are taught in an eight week format typically. um, And those uh, eight weeks are kind of broken into four uh, key uh, ways. Um, you have some reading, you have some attending to do, which is typically watching video lectures. Uh, everything is done asynchronously, but there are some uh, optional uh, lectures you can join uh, via Zoom that are uh, kind of live. Uh, so you've got reading, you've got attending, uh, you've got discussing, which is uh, using an online platform called uh, uh, like a discussion forum. Um, and then you, uh, then you have a complete, uh, an assignment that you complete. And typically those are papers or a video assignment. And then they culminate with a signature assignment at the end of the course that I was kind of referencing just a moment before. So for our week of convention, what I'm going to do my best to do is take kind of the eight, uh, topics that we have and, and, um, and break them down into something we can cover each day. Um, so uh, I, I'm working with the idea that we have uh, this volunteer leadership course and then we have the, the broader program and I'm wanting to share with, um, with the people at convention a little taste of what the leadership formation stuff goes in. So the first day of our of our course will be kind of an overview, uh, looking a little bit about what what is leadership, what is biblical leadership, and then what is volunteer leadership. And so at the end of the course, um, the the objectives would be that uh, volunteer leaders or or leaders in our church that are uh, leading other volunteers uh, would be able to communicate the value of volunteers to the leadership of an organization and the effectiveness of having volunteers involved. So uh, if you're going to be a volunteer leader, you need to be able to communicate the value of having volunteers. Um, And I think sometimes at churches we can take that for granted because we we have some 
basic volunteer positions already, like oh, ushering or you know greeting. But those are some of the easy ones. And in fact, I'm a greeter at a fairly large church that I attend now um, that I'm not in full-time ministry. And there's some things that I would say to the person who's doing the volunteer leading. I wish he would take this class, right? Because <laughs> he's not always engaging us with the value of, of what it means to be a volunteer and how we're part of the organization in a real way. Um, so you communicate not only to organizational leadership the value of volunteers, but also to the volunteers themselves. How do they, how are they advancing the mission of the organization? Um, and then you know you would be also able to understand the key principles in recruiting and engaging volunteers. Um, so we're going to get into some nuts and bolts. How do you recruit? How do you engage with them? And that's where the main project will focus is at the end of the week, there'll be some time uh, throughout the course where I'm going to be giving you some frameworks and some opportunities to draft up your own volunteer training uh, curriculum, basically. And at the end of it, you'll have a scope and sequence. You might not have every activity lined out, but you might have a figure out, this is where we on, this is the time of the year when we onboard these volunteers. This is the time when we re-engage with them. This is the time when we sunset volunteers and allow them an opportunity to recommit to the organization and, and being involved. Or is it time for them to serve in a different way? Um, and this would be a great you know, opportunity for us to talk about kind of that idea of re-engaging them. Um, and then uh, the third objective is to understand and prioritize key principles in creating a volunteer-friendly culture. Um, that supports the mission, vision, values, and uh, stuff of the programs. Uh, objective four is to understand key characteristics of an effective volunteer board. So we will spend uh, one, one session of our time will be on uh, managing a board. And whether that's a, a vision and support board like I had in youth ministry, uh, so they're helping me along, or that's your elder board and you're a pastor and you're, you're saying, these are my volunteers. Um, in the Churches of Christ that I was from, all elder boards were lay-led. Um, mm -hmm. Now, I know in some Christian churches, there'll, there'll be one or two pastors that might be uh, staff and on the elder board. So we can, we can talk a little bit about that, but I think most of us are dealing, at least in smaller church, rural church contexts, the people I know at the convention and the ones that I'm thinking about would benefit from figuring out how do I lead uh, my my elder board or my deacon board um, mm -hmm. who are volunteers. <clears throat> and then um, the last couple objectives, understanding basic risk management. Um, you know, this is kind of the nitty gritty. There'll be one, one session uh, or not a full session, but part of a session. We'll talk a little bit about making sure we're, we're engaging in safe practices with volunteers. Mm -hmm. um, and no matter the size of our organization, uh, we need to be engaging in some good uh, practices, which means we probably need not a cumbersome, but a little bit of an interview process or some sort mm -hmm. of gatekeeper uh, where we evaluate who can serve as a volunteer, what are their, what's required of them, and do we have ways to protect, um, you know, if we were talking children's ministry, are we protecting not only our children, but also the volunteers um, yeah. and, and speaking into that. Uh, the last, the last uh, objective in the course and something that will be shaping the content of, of the convention class will be understanding the, um, the foundational principles in leading and managing volunteers effectively. And so that's kind of the, the thing that I hope you walk away with. Uh, the two things are the, a project that's practical to you um, that you can actually kind of create and, and copy and paste for your different volunteer groups because, you know, a lot of us are leading multiple groups of volunteers uh, when we're in ministry. And so this would be a training um, curriculum or a training scope and sequence that you could recreate for each group. And, and maybe for your greeters, it's uh, pretty cut and dry. You know, we onboard them at this season and we do a quick training once a year. Um, there, That's probably not as big of one, but maybe for your children's ministry volunteers, there's a scope and sequence that involves uh, a more lengthy process of training and re-engaging them uh, over time. And depending on how large your organization is, you can you can really go more in depth with these things. Um, but yeah, that and then the the 
the second takeaway would just be to make sure you have kind of a foundation for what does it mean to lead and manage volunteers um, effectively. And, and so those are the big picture um, things. I hope they're practical. Uh, I hope that you actually have something to take away. Unlike the Master of Arts and Leadership course that you would actually take in volunteer leadership, you're not going to have to write a paper. There's no required reading. What we're going to do is give you a list of recommended reading. Um, and then the, uh, the lectures will hopefully build on uh, concepts and give you space to do your own, pursue your own further reflection. Um, yeah. And then with the recommended reading, uh, you will be as equipped, I think, uh, as you would if you took the course. Um, and, and I know that's a strong claim to make, but you're not getting the whole picture because you're not part of the entire program. Yeah. Uh, we can't do that. We can't squeeze that into one week. But, uh, but I'm, I'm really excited, Matt, about where these equip courses could go because I, I think with a little bit of um, extra effort, you know, we could see something like this have um, some reading required before you come to convention, some writing after you leave convention, and, uh, and yeah, you could pursue credit, you know, because yeah. I think you would be equipped uh, with the same uh, as what people are getting in our master uh, program. You know, it's funny you said uh, you hope that it would be um, practical and helpful. And the whole time you were talking, I was thinking, yep, I've had to deal with that. Yep, I'm having to figure that out. Yep, we messed that up the first few times. Still trying to figure that Like, Like all the things you're describing of situations with figuring out how to onboard people and how to sunset and, and provide off ramps, how to do uh, safe pro program children's programs that are safe for the kids and the adults and all that stuff. That's... I mean, the number of meetings I've had with my associate where we're wrestling through and figuring out those exact things, that's, mm -hmm. um, I'm actually, <laughs> you're making me frustrated that I'm not going to be available to take the class because I'll be, you know, my wife and I will be presidents and be, you know, running around doing all kinds of stuff. But yeah, that, that is very, very, uh, relevant to like, that's every day, mm -hmm. every day as a pastor, I'm doing things like that and wishing that I, uh, could do them better. Um, so that's, that sounds fantastic. Um, yeah. I'm yeah. going to, yeah, that, yeah, that's, I, I, the other thing I was seeing while you were talking is how often we kind of, uh, we have such a narrow vision of ministry as just the, um, like just this one point of contact between teachers and, and people listening and, or people learning. And, we don't really think about the level of discipling going on within the various levels of, of leadership, right? Like, like I think of working with my volunteers as they're doing the discipling and I'm asking them to do it. But there's also a lot of discipleship that goes on in that relationship as we communicate why this matters. And, and I know that I learned so much by serving. It actually makes a ton of sense that, that that's all discipleship all the way down. And, and obviously whenever I think about it, I know that that's true, but that's just not necessarily my kind of knee jerk look. And what you're describing here of, of taking a deeper look at working with volunteers, just it means taking that more seriously of, of, you know, we're discipling them. And yeah. Well, and, and if you think about it at a church, you know, and this is where I would say, my hope is that it's not just pastors who take this course at convention, but it is mm -hmm. the volunteer youth leader who yeah. might be trying to engage, you know, if you, if you have 20 students or 15 students or even 10 students, but you don't have a paid youth worker, um, then you might be a parent of one of those students mm -hmm. and you're trying to rally the other parents. Well, those are your volunteers, whether yeah. you call them volunteers or not. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to get them together. Well, or maybe you have a parent association or something. Um, you know, the, whatever that is, you're trying to rally them together. You're trying to motivate them, inspire them. You're trying to lead them. And uh, sometimes when we pay someone, we actually create kind of a crutch situation. And uh, we don't do as effective work as we could if we allowed volunteers to lead other volunteers. And so I'm looking at some of the key uh, the people that I would love to see in this course would be some key volunteer uh, people at churches, key lay leaders who are, uh, you know, coordinating 
Um, maybe it's a deacon who's kind of the, the lead deacon, you know. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe it's an elder who says, yeah, we don't want this to fall on the pastor. I'm, I'm leading volunteers because I get the people who usher. You know, it, it could be as simple as the, I'm the communion uh, tray pastor. You know, I'm the person yeah. who coordinates the volunteers of the communion trays. Well, you can get something out of this course. And in fact, mm-hmm. your volunteers who are leading on Sunday morning, uh, you, maybe you're a worship leader and you're a lay leader um, and you lead worship for your church and you think about your worship team as volunteers. Um, maybe you're the soup kitchen uh, person or the uh, you know pantry uh, or maybe you're the, uh, the clothing drive leader. Um, yeah. Whatever it is, even if you just have a volunteer event, you know, even if you're just managing an event once a year where you get the church to volunteer with you, uh, either way, you are a volunteer leader and you're yeah. leading other volunteers. And I think this class would be really, really helpful for you because volunteering in our world is changing. And the importance, though, of having volunteers and the need for volunteers has actually never been greater. Um, and so as we engage with the critical topics in the course, I think um, you're going to help advance the mission, the values, uh, the, the programs of your organization uh, by increasing the way that you lead, retain, um, bring on, onboard new volunteers, and, uh, and you build this new culture within your boards, uh, within your leadership teams, uh, as you address kind of the risks and some of the things you get wrong, um, but also while you uh, build this really healthy culture. So that that's kind of my hope and desire yeah. for the course. I think it's going to be really fun, um, and, I, and I hope you'd be part of it. Yeah. I Man, listening to you talk as a and being a pastor, thinking about how amazing it would be to have, you know, more volunteers who are recruiting volunteers, you know, and have more people beyond just the paid staff that are generating volunteers and passionate about training them and having multiple layers of that sounds amazing. Um, yeah. So I think you're absolutely right. I think anybody who's working with volunteers, I would love to have any, there are so many people as you were talking that I was thinking of like in my church that I would love to be equipped that way. That's awesome. Well, hey, thank you so much for uh, talking to us about this class and for being willing to teach it. Um, I think I'm very excited by what you've been saying. I, I genuinely am getting a little disappointed that I'm not going to be um, available to take it. Um, maybe I'll just have to take the actual class at Bushnell. Um, there you go. But uh, yeah, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your time preparing that. And um, we're looking forward to um, seeing what comes of this in the summer. Thanks, Matt. I'm looking forward to being at convention. And uh, if there's anything that Bushnell University can do for uh, your church or for uh, churches of anybody listening, uh, we want to be a resource uh, that that helps uh, churches pay attention to what God is up to. And we do that through uh, pulpit supply and sending our worship teams for um, having your students come. If you want to come take a tour, I'd be happy to show you around campus. Um, but I also think that it's, it's much bigger than that. Uh, we're, we're hoping to be part of this kingdom work that the Northwest Christian Network is one element of, that as uh, Christians have been meeting in Oregon for over 170 years, and Bushnell University has been around for over 127 years, uh, we believe God has another 100 years of faithful service ahead uh, as we do this together. So thank you so much, and it's been, been fun being on the podcast. Awesome. Thank you, Lars. This episode was produced by the Northwest Christian Network. Theme song is Simply Beautiful by Scott Riggin. The Northwest Christian Network is a network of Christians and churches gathering together to serve the kingdom and cast their net across the Northwest. Find out more about our ministries and events at www.nwchristiannetwork.com. I'm Matt Holmes. Thanks for listening.